Good morning, everyone. Today we are examining Ezekiel chapter 13. And as we read the chapter yesterday, there were a number of things that, that somewhat stuck out to me when it comes to what is being discussed in this chapter. Remember that God is laying out before Ezekiel, or through Ezekiel, uh, his message to the false prophets and to uh, the women who sow charms and things of that nature for the idolatrous gods. And talking about the impact that they've had on his people, but also talking about the judgment that is upon them for their deeds. And there are a lot of things that I wish we had time to unpack out of this chapter uh, this morning. But take a look at just a couple of things that I think are somewhat the core of what it is that God is telling to these people. Uh, just as a side note, if you just take reference to the number of times that God makes the statement here, and then you shall know that I am the Lord, I think it's around five or six times in this short chapter, you realize that the ultimate emphasis is God wants them to understand that he is the one in control. And that when he speaks, it means something, and that pretending to speak for him does not curry his favor. And so, <clears throat> as we begin this morning, I want us to start in verse 5, where there, in speaking concerning the false prophets, God says, They have envisioned futility and false divination, saying, Thus says the Lord, but the Lord has not sent them, yet they hope that the word may be confirmed. I want you to notice the last statement of verse 5, because I think it's very important in all of this. And that is the fact that these people know that the things that they're saying are not directly from God. They recognize that the things that they are saying are, are not what God has said to them. They are not messengers. They are not prophets. But what it is is they hope that what it is they say will come to pass. They hope that the message that they're presenting is what will transpire. Unfortunately, there are many in the religious world today that are exactly the same way. The things that they preach and the things that they proclaim are not things that are found in Scripture. They are not things that have the backing of Scripture. But those who present them hope that this is the way it's going to be. Hope that this is what God is going to do. Hope that this is what God is going to allow to take place. And this is the basic principle. They will say, thus says the Lord, even though that's not what the Lord says, under the auspices of hoping that God will somehow do it this way. God says, I don't work that way, and I've never worked that way. I say what I want to say, and I do what I intend to do, whether you that's what you were hoping for or not because I know what's best. In verse 5, you have these individuals who are hopeful that the Lord will see things their way. And they're trying to convince the people to follow after them. In the days of Jeremiah, as we, as we went through and examined Jeremiah a few weeks ago, one of the things that you find is exactly these kinds of messages. And it seemed like no matter what Jeremiah said, these other prophets, these false prophets, would come out and they would say exactly the opposite. They would make proclamations like what you find in verse number 10 of Ezekiel 13. Because indeed, verse 10 says, Because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace when there is no peace. And one builds a wall, and they plaster it with untempered mortar. The cry is peace. It's not really going to happen like this. Jerusalem isn't really going to be destroyed. All of these things are not actually going to happen. It's all going to be okay. That's the message that was going out through Jerusalem in the days of Jeremiah. When Jeremiah was painting a very different picture, and they said, don't listen to him. And they would throw him in prison, and they would throw him in exile and various other things because of it. Ezekiel says, in speaking to the false prophets, that they are seducing my people, saying, peace, when there is no peace. 
And then he gives this, this visual picture. This is not a literal occurrence, but rather it's a, it's a picture that's being painted of what they're doing. And he talks about building a wall and plastering it with untempered mortar. Now, the idea of untempered mortar means that it's going to be very weak. It's, it's going to crumble very easily. It's really nothing more than a facade. It's not actually a wall. And, and therefore, it's ultimately rather worthless. And yet, this is what they're putting all of their time and their effort into. And so he talks about those who are going to uh, going to build this up, and then there's going to be flooding rains and great hailstones and stormy winds, and it is not going to stand. And that's the message of the false prophets. It's like building a wall of untempered mortar. It won't ever stand the test of reality and of the true nature of what is going on. But now I want you to drop down to the latter section of chapter 13. As he gets into talking about the women that are doing their various works and deeds to undermine the uh, message of God. And you come down to verse number 22 at the end of the chapter. <coughs> and there, God says through Ezekiel to these women, Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and you have strengthened the hands of the wicked so that he does not turn from his wicked way to save his life. The impact of these individuals and the things that they have done is that they have kept the righteous from having the heart that God wants them to have, the heart of hope, the heart of, of thanksgiving, the heart of recognition of the righteousness and justice of God, and instead turned it to sadness and grief and despair. And at the same time, strengthened the hands of the wicked so that they are not willing to turn away from their unrighteous deeds to do what is right and save their lives. These individuals, whether they realize it or not, have cost many people their lives by their actions because they don't really believe God. And they don't believe in God, whereas God has been trying to give warnings not to destroy people, but to save them, to get them to turn away from their wicked deeds, to get them to turn back to what is right and what is true and what is just. But because of the actions of these people, they will not do it. They are convinced everything's going to be okay. As you come into chapter 13, there are a lot of things that you can point out. There are a lot of lessons to be learned. There are a lot of lessons for us today when it comes to understanding what the Word of God is, when it comes to listening to what people say the Word of God is, and when it comes to pointing people towards righteousness and truth. So I hope that you take some of these things, and I hope that you, you search through this chapter and find more things that we didn't have time to cover this morning in regards to these areas. Tomorrow, Lord willing, we will come back and we will begin our study through Ezekiel chapter 14. But until then, I hope you have a great day.